welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to connect our react application to the node backend so we are going to perform our first api request from our react side so previously we have performed the api request from the postman so in this lecture we are going to perform it from our actual react application so this is the deployed and this is the developing so let's open the uh, react application client so in this client first we have to make some changes in the package.json so not changes it is only one change we have to add one extra property here so that is called as the proxy so because our backend is present in other port that's the reason you have to use this proxy property so at the last line here you can see this is package.json in the client not in the server it is in the client proxy here you have to write the domain of our backend here domain is nothing but localhost plus port number so just copy it and paste it here so this is the front end domain so we have to place the backend domain that means where our node.js server is running so our node.js run server is running at port number 5000 so i am going to replace 3000 with the 5000 that's it control s so now we have say we have successfully set up this proxy server now we can freely uh, send the api request from our components close this package.json close this server close this rooms root so from uh, from this lecture and to the coming uh, two three lectures we do not have any work in the back end so in the next 30 minutes we are going to work completely in the front end only so you can close all these rooms models everything so we have to work only in this src folder so expand this src folder Uh, click on screens and create our first screen which is called as the home screen home screen dot js in this home screen dot js write rfce react functional component write one h1 text home screen control s and add this home screen in the app dot js so before adding the home screen first we have to install the required packages in the react side i'm going to install it they are the first one is npm i react router dom because routing purpose react router dom and uh, axios to perform the api operations so install these two first if we require anything we can install it later press enter so these two are mandatory things in this lecture that's the reason i am i am installing in this lecture only react react here we go guys the both npm packages react router dom as well as the axios have been installed successfully now i will restart the server npm start now i am going to import the react router dom package in our app.js so we have to import the browser router as well as the route packages uh, import curly brace browser router route as well as the link from react router dom react router dom now i am going to create the routes browser router sorry yeah in this browser router i am going to create the root for the home screen root the path will be slash home and exact is the prop and uh, in this root the component that is going to render is home screen that's it let's import this home screen at the top yeah home screen is also imported now in the localhost 3000 slash home we have to render this home screen so it is still restarting let it start yeah the server has been restarted successfully press ctrl s and let's go to the developing version localhost 3000 yeah in the localhost 3000 there is no component now let's go to the home 
here you can see we got the home screen so in this home screen only we are going to perform our api endpoint operation so already we have imported axios let's go to the home screen so in the home screen first i am going to write the use effect hook because in the use effect hook only we are going to perform the api operation so when the component is rendered the api function will be called and will be getting the data in that function only first of all import the use state and use effect hook use state and use effect so these are the life cycle methods in the uh, react functional components and import the axios also import axios now here i am going to perform the api operations use effect so whenever you are performing any api operation in back end or in front end we have to use the async await and try catch blocks so this is mandatory here i am going to write the function name as async and here i will write try catch blocks yeah here i am going to create one variable const data equal to await axios dot get method because we are going to face the details of the all rooms in the mongodb in the colons we have to uh, pass the para that api endpoint slash api slash rooms slash get all rooms and we have to wrap this thing in the data so dot data that's it so we have to wrap this thing in the curly braces and at the last you have to put dot data so we need not to refactor that later so you just need to type clg console dot log data control s if it is having any error clg error control s so you have to use the same syntax otherwise you have you will face the errors let's check the output uh open console here you can see we got the array response in that array we are having the five objects that means five rooms so that means our api operation performed successfully now i am going to uh update the state of our rooms with the help of these five objects we are getting from the back end so first of all i will create one state const rooms and set rooms equal to use state initially it is empty after performing the api operations we have to update these rooms state by the data we are getting from the back end so instead of printing the response in the console i am going to update this state set rooms just add data sorry data that's it so to check whether the state is updating successfully or not write one h1 tag and write one statement the length of rooms is sorry this uh, like just write there are total rooms dot length rooms dot length rooms there are total five rooms it should print let's check refresh the page here you can see there are five rooms initially it will show zero so that means it is performing after performing is completed it will show five zero five so it will update after completion of the api operations thank you see you in the next lecture